some ice skater who they call the boss. Yeah, he, he's a piano man of his song Piano Man. Yeah, yeah. he's a piano man. That's how you got famous. Hi, friends. Host Eric here. Oh, hi. Host of Talking with Famous People. And today, I am asking the provocative question Will death claim us all? That's a good question. And the answer is maybe you, losers, not me. <laughs> or actually, the answer is probably. Probably, yes. Well, actually, okay, there's this quote in um, Game of Thrones, and the young girl is learning with her needle point, like, uh, it was a needle, what do you call that? Sword? Needle oh, sword? A, a rapier. Is that how it's called, rapier? Yeah. So, well, so with her, she's teaching, she's learning with her rapier, and... Uh, so she's getting frustrated because he's doing really fancy, like, and she's like, no, no, no. And uh, he teaches her a lesson by saying, what do you say to death? Not today. To keep her, keep up, like, going. To not be afraid of him. Like, keep going and learn the techniques from him. Like, what do we say to death? Not today. Well, see, that's one way. That's one approach to it. Or you could be like the Japanese and say... Death is lighter than a feather. Right. Beauty is heavier than a mountain. <laughs> what do I mean by death? I mean the uh, the succession of dynamic processes within the body followed by decay and rot of the body. That's what I mean by death. Um, I don't mean the death of your dreams when you get second place in the contest? Nope. That's not what I'm referring to. <laughs> I'm not talking about the death, the death of civil discourse, which died a long time ago. <laughs> it actually died like in the 1700s or something. But civil discourse? Yeah, yeah. It, it's like the, uh, the political discourse back in the day was more intelligent kind of in some ways in because some ways. it was more like policy aware and stuff yeah but it was also um just as divisive and um groupist as it is now can, it, I, can I just say that I think one of the most well, the Wild West has always known it's been a crazy time. But also, um, Gangs in New York, I think, shows a really good, uh, sh like, that's the shit gone wild, like, is it New craziness. Is 80s New York or what? 1800s, like. Oh, 1800s New York? Yeah, What's Gangs in New York is a classic. It's a Martin Scorsese. Oh, I thought it was about contemporary. Mm -mm. It's old, old it's in old days? old school, yeah. Mm. A Marmot! May I compliment you on your monocle? Nice choice of monocle. I'm also a fan of a monocle. I don't have one, but... Ooh, I like that you're a fan of a monocle. At least not one on a chain. Well, when, in fact, what, the reason I have this thing is because I was telling Spacey about how I wanted a monocle. Aww. And he ended up uh, ordering this for me as a present. That's so nice. But this is not what I meant by a monocle, though. What I meant by a monocle is the kind of monocle Amara Mods emoji is wearing. Yes, the one that you can keep the circle you, keep you, it you on squeeze the, it on something. You squeeze it in your Yeah. Uh, I mean you have to have a pocket. You mm -hmm. know? Let me see this. You hmm. do have to have huh. a pocket. More closely. <laughs> so I've been thinking about death in the last few minutes because my dad came out here and he, the last few days he's been concerned about his heart. He had a little bit of uh, chest pain the other day. He wasn't sure if it was heart related or indigestion related or something. And then today he, he came out and said, uh, feels as though his heart rate is irregular. He's skipping a beat occasionally. He's not sure if he's sort of being panicky or, um, You've been adulting. Congratulations. That's pretty impressive. I was just talking with Rachel about how I don't want to be an adult, really, and how scary it is to think of my dad passing. Yeah. 
Um, I have a very small family and my biological family at the moment comprises my aunt and uncle in Virginia who are my dad's age. My uncle Lonnie's about to he's going to pass pretty soon. I think he's, he's had a lot of medical problems. I, to be honest, I think my dad is suffering from NI poor plus TE with nothing to pay attention to. <laughs> it's like, I don't think there's anything wrong with him. I think he's, he doesn't know how to interpret what's important and stuff. That's an NI thing. And, uh, I think he's just fine. I, I felt his pulse for quite a long time and I didn't, I didn't hear him skipping beats like he was saying he was, but or feel it skip a beat. But I take his word for it. But however, my heart does that all, all fairly often. It always has. It's like occasionally I feel this weird like arrhythmia or something, but it's not. It typically is not a big deal. This dysrhythmia, or arrhythmia, or whatever you want to call it, is usually not symptomatic of anything. It's just a an occasional occurrence. But somebody said in a, in a stream one time, I think, in a live, live chat, somebody said to me that uh, you never really were an adult, a man, or whatever, until your parents die. And it's the sort of thing that historically I've been um, not the sort of thing that I like to hear and let go unchallenged. Because it would seem to, it would seem to be somewhat dismissive of of me, I guess. But um, but it's true, really. I when I think about my dad passing, it's I I don't know I don't know how I all feel exactly, but I. I do know that it's going to be it's going to produce an entirely different worldview for me. You know, when you go through life knowing that your chick goes bad, you can always go home. You always got a safety net. You can always count on mom and dad to uh, to be kind and and it, have your interest in mind, even when you did something stupid and fucked up. And that you know, that's that's the sort of world that when you live in that world, you are free to take more chances. You're free to um, be more childlike, you know. And you go through the world with. A less deep terror about things than other people do, because, of course, if I fail, I still haven't failed yet. I just have to go home, and it's okay, son. Come on in, and you know, here's some money, and relax. That, of course, the thing is. I won't be at I won't be at any real risk in in the event that when that happens, you know, the actual functional impact of that is that I'm going to be greatly empowered by that. But um, because just financially, if nothing else, you know, um, because both my parents receive. I mean, either of my parents receive both of my parents' pensions until both of them are dead. So, you know, uh, if I was interested in maximally empowering myself, then I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be dreading my dad's passing. I would be, I guess, anxious for it or something. But, um, but I, I mean. I 
I don't know. There's something about talking to him today that made me feel just how how few people there are in my life. You know, how few how few family members I have. My mom's basically gone. If my dad were to pass, it'd be me and Delilah, with biological family members, plus my aunt. The only actual biological family members that I can't that I, that I have. Um, you know, always growing up, I was happy I was an only child. I never, I never wanted any siblings. Not until I was way past the time when I wanted siblings, when I could have had a sibling that would have been meaningful. Then I thought, I wish I had had siblings, but I never. When I was a little kid, I was always happy to not have siblings. I always thought, I don't want anybody else competing with me for resources and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. I did have very loving parents. I had incredibly loving parents. Incredibly good parents. Yeah, I am, actually. Well, see, that's the thing. Um... Now that you mentioned that, I hadn't ever even I hadn't even thought about that, but I really want my dad to to be around until Delilah has a kid, you know? That'd be great. Yeah. But I've, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to hurry your child along and get you pregnant. <laughs> Most of the People in Delilah's life are telling her, don't get pregnant. Huh. I'm the only one telling her, go ahead, get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I've been telling her that since she was a teenager. <laughs> well, if you get pregnant, it's fine, I don't care. <laughs> we'll just raise a child and it'll be great. Aww. I would be I would be helpful in that. Yeah. I'm a great babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I'm a great parent or grandparent or whatever. Mm-hmm. Everyone's all, oh, you'll ruin your life if you get pregnant. No, you won't. Ridiculous. If she were to get pregnant, um, you know, if she had gotten pregnant at like 18 or something, it would never ruin her life. For some people, you know, it's a personal choice. It yeah, is. I, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying I wish she had sought getting pregnant. I just kept hearing this sort of general narrative from everybody else, all the other adults around her, that getting pregnant was the equivalent of Grand Theft Auto That's or something. That's not fair. You know, it's like, look, everybody, will you stop telling her, you know, not to get pregnant? So what? If she gets pregnant, she gets pregnant. We have another kid. That'd be fine. I have another kid around. It's like, the kids, the kids seem to belong to more than just one person anyway. It's like, Delilah was raised by me, my parents, uh, Melinda's parents, Candace, and Candace's parents. It seems like grandparents, too. Well, those are, yeah, she had three sets of grandparents. Mm -hmm. Three sets of grandparents in the mix raising her, and they all wanted access. They all wanted a piece of her, you know? <laughs> and uh, so she was, she had a lot of, a lot of people caring about her and loving her and stuff and wanting her in their life. And the only, of, of all those people, the only ones I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable having her was her biological mom. She did have to go stay with her biological mom some when her mom was living with Ray. But fortunately, when that when she was living with Ray, I did trust Ray. So uh, her biological mom was the only person, only toxic person in her life. And she, she directed a certain amount of toxicity towards Delilah. She sees Delilah as, as all about Melinda, which is, Delilah exists to make Melinda feel good, so that to, to make Melinda look good, and to, you know, as far as Melinda's concerned, duties go one direction. It's the daughter's duty to the mother. That's how those, that's the duties comprising the mother daughter relationship is that the daughter has duties to the mother. And that's it. You know, it's like, um, you're a terrible fucking parent. <laughs> I don't know why I ever told you this, the Melinda, but you are an absolutely terrible parent. 
Good thing they have the roller skating thing in common. Yeah. Yeah, it is toxic and detrimental shy tea. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that uh, Dahlia did well with her mom because she didn't have to spend that much time with her mom, really. Um, mostly, she lived at my house. You know, for, for years, she maybe saw her mom every couple of months. Uh, maybe for a weekend. Like, you know, she'd come pick her up for her weekend. Um, maybe. And then mm. there, 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 yeah, been, there were a number of occasions where um, Candace and I were sitting in the living room. Candace would get to Lila all packed up for her trip to her mom's house for the weekend. And mom just wouldn't Damn. show up. No, he was like, where's my mom? Doesn't she want me? It was really Aww. quite sad. And <laughs> I just wanted to tell her, well, she, she, no, she doesn't. And you shouldn't want her either. But it's okay. I, you know, I, yeah, I couldn't tell sad. her that. I know I couldn't tell her that, obviously. But I'm saying, I, that's what I thought in my head. I yeah, know. it was really sad. But, yeah, um, sad. you know, she, she had so much love in her life that it, it was mostly baffling to her. Like everybody else in her life loved her so purely and well that she just, she seemed genuinely baffled by she, what was wrong with her mom. That's ba- it is baffling. Which is, which is a good thing. It's like, she did get to see, she, she was mostly had modeled for her healthy relationships. Yeah. But, I mean, because Candace and I had a pretty healthy relationship. It just, I wasn't healthy, and we weren't meant to be together, but we had a healthy relationship. And also, like, I feel like have the ESTP ISFJ like grandma must have been real nice too. Which grandma? Like, like Delilah having an ISFJ grandma. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have been like. Oh my! Oh my God! My mom was, <laughs> was, you know, the platonic archetypal ideal of grandma. Oh. Okay? She just she my mom put on grandma outfit like. She was born to wear it. Oh. The hilarious thing being, of course, when Melinda got pregnant after we got married, my mom was absolutely fucking livid at how irresponsible I was for getting my wife pregnant before I owned my own home. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just... But you know what? Uh, as soon as the baby came out, my mom... 180 degrees, <laughs> and she told me many times thereafter that she was very wrong, and that she, you know, it's like I said, "See, mom, you, yeah. oh, I love her so much." Oh, oh. My, mom. She, my mom, my mom just absolutely adored Delilah. Oh. It was very clear to me that um, she loved Delilah more than me. <laughs> <laughs> she basically told me that many times. Like, <laughs> like, I, Finally, I got the right child. <laughs> oh, see, that's ECP ISFJ. Yeah, they really got oh. all great. Well, that's just my mom. That's just ISFJ. You know, they don't like surprises. Okay, they really don't like surprises. <laughs> they, they, and that, they don't like change. At all. <laughs> so, in the status quo, Eric, you are married without a child. And no pregnant woman, and uh, in the status quo, I'm expecting that to remain the same. And then when I, hey, she's pregnant, we're gonna have a kid. What change? <laughs> I don't like change. But once she got accustomed to it, you know, she well, as soon, I mean, it didn't take any time at all since the <laughs> baby was born. As soon as she saw her, my mom was just like in heaven. Even now at as she's super, uh, she's super dementia out, so dementia out, in fact, that she carries a baby doll with her. I mean, yeah, that is. the thing is, if I'm, if I'm super dementia out, I don't think I'm going to play with a baby doll, but my mom's sort of like most primitive form of my mom with all of her intellect gone is loving a baby, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, she did great as a grandma. My mom was a perfect mom, 
until I hit about like 14 or something, 13, 14, uh, my, my rebellious teenagehood and my ISFJ mom didn't mix very well together. It took me into my 20s to sort of like regather my relationship with my mom a bit because um, she... And, and of course, as she got older and she got started getting dementia, she got more and more resistant of um, more and more resistant of anything new or any deviance from what she already already had experienced. I like that she liked me. Yeah, she does like you. She, you know, my mom. That's the that's the other thing is my mom knew who she liked uh, even right up until the very the very end. Yeah. Um, yeah. She knew she liked Rachel. She knew she hated Lily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, and she was right yeah. about that. Yeah. You know, she was right to not the like Lily. End. Yeah. About was, that stuff. It was only my dad's ni polar to let him think that not just not fire Lily right away. It was just like <laughs> yeah. wow, you know. Yeah. Because wow. he, she was very helpful to him in moving her physically, but other than that. She wasn't much of a help. Well, that's as I tool, right? So my dad's comparing her against not her. Right. Versus comparing her against what we would like to have or what it would look like if it were good. The fact that this incredibly shitty employee you hired is slightly better than no employee at all doesn't make her a good hire. Right. What does dementia do to personality during observation? Well, I would say the the last things to go are your one and two. So my mom had Fe left after the Ti was all gone. She still has the the shell or the casing of Fe. Yeah, because she used to hit. Trump every time she saw his picture or name. So. Well, that I think was F.I. But what I mean by the, the casings of F.E. was oh, she'd, she'd talk with all the 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 like interface stuff yes. there, but not yes. the content. Oh, yes. that's nice. Sometimes but not referring to anything. But yeah. sometimes she would. Sometimes she would point to an article and she would have some sort of distant memory of her being in Europe and then she would connect it. Mm -hmm. um, she talks about her friend Maureen a lot. So it was like SI memories. Some, some of them. SI, yeah, it's like SI went last because she was still she was still able to, even when she couldn't talk, yeah. she would try to convey that she was thirsty or, or, and she'd be focused on that. So when I put her into bed, she go, oh, that feels so good. <laughs> yeah, so every time. Yep, yep. Um, and then, no, 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 no. And then I know? pick her up. She, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, <that feels> so <laughs> and then, then right away, <laughs> oh, it feels so nice. Um, I mean, that's, that's a possibility in some sense. Bacon. What here's what I don't think is ever going to be possible and is never going to happen. It is never going to be the case that we are able to transfer human consciousness or identity into something other than the body in which it came. <laughs> in other words, you're never gonna um you're never gonna put me in a computer, you're never gonna put me in a robot or whatever. The reason being, in my opinion, being a human entity requires you to have to, to be a a fusing of both physical and metaphysical. You know, we have four physical functions and four metaphysical functions. To be human, you must have, and and in some sort of configuration, all eight. Um, how am I going to have SI? How am I going to pay attention via SI if I don't have a body? Even if you can download my memories of what's happened before, if I don't have a physical body, how am I going to experience the things like sleep and uh, and eating and stuff. Well, you might say, well, you can, we don't need to eat. You know, you just can get rid of that part of life. See, if you're saying that stuff, you're almost certainly an intuitive. <laughs> because just because 
we prioritize the metaphysical half of life doesn't mean we can do without the physical half. No, we can't. And think that somehow. Hell no. I mean, it is it is indeed possible to conceptualize of oneself engaging metaphysically with other people without a body, but um. So I, I do think it's conceivable that, for example, what what could Facebook do? Facebook could, if they wanted to direct their attention to this, they could have access everybody's Facebook messages and create an algorithm that um, gathers all the Facebook messages people have ever written and learns to engage just like that with people. So, like, they could come, Facebook could could create a an entity called Dead Eric after I'm gone that interacts with people just as I interact with people via my messages. So it could, in other words, in theory, we come up with an algorithm that copies a person's expressive self perfectly. And so that if in this scenario, this algorithm would be able to, you know, after I die, Rachel will be able to Facebook message me and it would be talked back with her as though it, and she would be unable to tell it's not me from, just from reading the text, okay? So that's, that sounds just like Eric. Oh, my God. That's possible. But remember, that's, a, that's, that's not real consciousness. It's not an identity, and that's not, uh, that's not me. That's, a, that's just the display part of me. We can potentially mimic the display part, but we can't actually transfer the identity. There's a movie about that um, called Her, where a guy basically falls in love with AI, an AI computer, like, basically, if you were talking to Siri all day, and they were able to have a human conversation with you that got that good. They would call passing the Turing test. It, it was very interesting because he kept on having past... And, and he started to remember the human elements that he had with his ex-wife. You know, it, it instead, I don't know, I found it very interesting. I don't remember right. the end. So, but. so Zayn Black says, I argue with people in the TWF chat about this. If your memories are uploaded into another form, I think of that as me. All right, well, here's the thing. I think we are... Um, we're misunderstanding in that instance what a memory is. Memories don't exist independent of of a, memories exist as a means of either feeding ideation or as an associative pull up to stimuli. They're not, we don't have a library of memories in our head that we can stand back and look at and go, okay, these are my memories. And instead what we have is uh, an automatic response that says, uh, well, for example, last night we were driving up to, um, we were driving up to here from the weed store and there's this spot on Santa Anita that looks the road where where the roads and the trees and everything look just like this other spot on uh I don't I guess it's like on Golden West or something. And so when I saw this spot, I was like, where am I? Am I here? Am I am I over there? Oh wait, no, no, this is Santa. It just looks like that spot. Okay. That's SI. SI is is Taking in, when the stimuli comes into my eyes, what I'm seeing around me, SI is bringing up the relevant thing from the past. That happens to me a lot um, with music. I have a lot of connections that happen with music. Mm. With your yeah. with your actual my personal memories. experiences? Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is, well, the other thing that music will do, it will... Uh, it will provoke um, NI links too. Like, for example, yeah. this song sounds like you should do this kind of dance to it. It's yeah. something that I was talking with Rachel about the other day. Like, certain kinds of songs you're supposed to do that, like, like that, that, that kind of like 
mod but, dance. Yeah. You know, and certain kinds of songs, it's better to do like a, um, like a, a, like a choreographed sort of step, step, yeah, step thing. Like and certain kinds of, of songs have, you know, different songs have different. Or some make you go like this too. I'm not going to lie. When it's right. like. Da -da 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 um so so that's that's an ni link when it tells you sort of what it is or, you know that song um that new song that sounds like wait a minute mr postman uh i like that song by the way i want to put that on snappy tracks you know what i'm talking about i don't think so <laughs> Like no, it was 1966, know man. You know. Cool, that's cool. I yeah. like that. Like it was that. Was, this isn't like it was 1966, man. Is one of the lyrics. That's or cool. Let's see. You'll recognize it. Oh uh, yeah, I know that song. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, feel it still. Portugal the man. Hey, let me play this. I so like Portugal. That's good stuff. Yeah. That is good stuff. How's the title clickbait? Yeah. Because, clickbait? because I'm not really answering definitively the question. Will you, or is death, what is the title? Are you going to die or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> is everybody going to die? Is death for certain? Is it, yes. Is it? Yeah. I believe that. Will the death come to us had, all? Yeah. Is it? <laughs> yeah. It was copyright music. I not was, today. I, <laughs> I was really enjoying that uh, 1966 song. Me too. <clears throat> I tried to reply to you, but the chat cut out yesterday. My friend said, if you had worded it as, if only one Keanu has five Keanus, then the answer is six. If only matters. 
Hmm. Who's Larkin Rose? How do you know what you know? Should we check it out? Um, yeah, we should. Uh, so um, the thing about, you got to remember that Keone mechanics don't operate with the same math as the macro universe. I wonder what Keanu would say about BLM. <laughs> if, if he's the angel everyone says he is, he'd explain how it's divisive and not helpful. Probably in that much nicer. I, I think so, right? He'd be so polite about it. He'd be so polite about it. Oh buddy. my gosh, you have to watch Crazy Rich Asians with me okay. at some point. Right. Really. He's in it and so funny. Or no, no, not. No, he's not in that. It's. Oh, I wish he was. He's not in that. It's another Netflix movie. It's always my. Always be my maybe. And how do you know what you know? Video? By whom? Larkin Rose? Who's Larkin Rose? What? Oh, this is. This is libertarian stuff, probably. Uh, I thought it was music. I thought so too. Um, coffee is in the mug. Let's see how far I can get it. Oh, I guess. Oh, oh Rachel. I'm so sorry. I don't, I'm going to be sorry. You guys are coffee all over you. No. <laughs> I really Wow, appreciate. you really spilled a lot of coffee on yourself. Yeah, it's been You happening. just poured that whole cup on yourself. Basically, pretty much. yeah, to prove that I had coffee in my mug. Well, you could wow. have picked up this as well. What's his analogy <laughs> on the cover? Oh, my God. What's he saying about it? Just tell me what he's saying. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to watch it. I just want to know what his argument is. <laughs> do you, Aaron? Well, I do that all the time in life. It's Paulina, Paulina, said, I really do not know why I keep watching your streams. Can someone explain that to me? <laughs> um, well, uh, look inside yourself. The answer is within. The thing is, probably, Paulina, one of the things is that in its current manifestation of this stream, Maybe indefinitely, who knows? Um, there's you. You can be pretty confident that I'm going to actually engage with you when you say something. If you, I might, I might not respond to everything, but if you say a few things, I'm certainly going to respond to something. So it's pretty. It's pretty easy to meaningfully engage with other people either in the chat or with me in this live stream as it is, mostly because of its size and the particular population of people who are here. We don't have. Most most places where people can type words into things um, can be it can be a challenging place for people to interact on the internet because you know things people come in and try to get toxic sometimes you know people come in and try to get toxic and unless you unless it's an environment where there's I guess you'd say adequate leadership regarding how to deal with that stuff and make sure that it's dealt with properly. And you know, that, that's, that's, this is not an easy environment to find because it's surprising it's persisted as long as it has in its current state. Um, I'd like to think it's a good live stream as yeah, live streams it is a go. Good live stream. And yet it's not popular. <laughs> you know, so uh, that's probably why you like it. If it were to get really popular, you'd probably. Find it less enjoyable. We have really good people in the chat too. Yeah, that's the thing. We know? got a great a great community of people, and it's the right size still at the moment for people here to enjoy it. Yeah. And if you have questions, Eric or I will try to answer to the best of our knowledge. If you if you have questions, I'm gonna shame you for those questions. What do you mean you don't know that? Why would you ask a question like that? 
People love it when you talk to them like that. Uh, Excuse me. I'm here before I do a lot of yard work for my job. I like to hear ideas. Cool. Well, let me see if I can come up with any. Um, my profession is Eric's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate You're that. Welcome. I am, though. I am his professional girlfriend. She's my... She's my ontology caregiver. She cares for I my do. ontology. And he cares for mine. Mm -hmm. I can't play ontology it. I get copyrighted. Caregiver. Do I have a grandfather? Uh, actually, the truth is, I never knew either of my biological grandfathers. Um, never met either of my biological grandfathers. I had a person I called grandfather who was my grandmother's second husband. Um, and he was great. Al Cole. But he was not my bio. I was not biologically related to Al, right? Yeah, but he's I, he's he's my grandfather. You as far as I'm him concerned. your grandfather. Yeah, 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 he's my grandfather. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I just wanted to uh, clarify Biological. that that it's interesting actually. Now that you mention it, because I haven't really thought about that. But um, I know, isn't it? <laughs> it's because I asked. I said, but people ask you that, can you please answer that way? And she said, Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> she, yeah. she did that by because I requested it. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, but like. It's true. Well, also, I yeah. wouldn't have said it if it wasn't. Oh, yeah. And uh, definitely professional. Shame on you for that question, email answer. You know the answer to that. How dare you ask a question to which you already know the answer? You know why I didn't shame you. Hey, you know what? What's going on here? Why hasn't any of this happened? <laughs> I'm playing hold things I'm going to smoke. <laughs> this is one of my favorite games, you see? I'm sitting here doing this. I've got cigarette, <laughs> lighter, cigarette. <laughs> Don't you love that? I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but it's time to hold things you're going to smoke. Get your hands full of shit. You don't have any reason to be holding. <laughs> That's when the uh, NE takes over, really. Yeah. <laughs> That's SI4. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, you're flabby. That's so cute. There's so many times. It's so cute. So many times Aww. have I like been trying to do something like type type words on the type typewriter thing here, the keyboard. And then after I'm like struggling to go like T H I realize I've got like this in my hand <laughs> I'm typing. I'm like, Eric, Eric, put those things down. Oh, that is so funny. I bet you can type an SI Dom like um celebrity by whether by how much stuff they hold in their hand. Probably. They say that Hillary Duff is a SI S I S F J and she is known for having like Starbucks cell phone like crazy shit. I mean amazing amount of shit in her hand. Well oh, ISFJ is or more, they're the ones that have purses that um, mm -hmm. if there's just like, how do you find anything in this purse? And yeah. then they go, they have ah, everything. Let me just, let me just, and they pour it all out on the table. <laughs> oh, here it is. <laughs> well, they know it's in there. <laughs> Thank you, Levi Samuels. If, if you put a little pre time pressure on them, their FE second slot goes crazy and they just up into their entire purse. Eric Sauer is a fanny pack. It's 10 bucks, yeah. Raphael. Pack cigars is 10 bucks in America. Oh, what's the conversation like between two ISFJs? Can you talk about how great everything is? Um, or like your, what do you, like, how I mean, I, I'm not sure if ISFJs get along with each other or not. No, I'm asking, I'm kind of asking you Levi? guys saying, oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, well, you too. <coughs> How do you think it would be? I just, I tend to think about my own experience with my own type is that I can get along with them very well, but um, it there generally has to be some sort of uh, purpose to the interaction because if it's just casually chilling, we both want to fill the same niche. But that's maybe because we're extroverted. 
two introverted types, ISFJs, both SI DOM, they might not feel the same kind of niche com competition that, that ENTPs do. Mm. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, what would you Levi? say? Levi, Levi Samuel. My mom was an um, in ISFJ, Paulina, Paulina. She was an ESTJ, and my dad is an ENFP. You can thank the EU for smoke prices and the RAF. Well, how does the Royal Air Force impact cigarette prices? How does it impact you? We just talk about random topics on things we enjoy and reminisce about things in the past. Oh, much. that's cute. I mean, do you are you drawn? Do you like each other a lot? Are you drawn to hang out with each other, or do you get bored of each other? Why do you watch my stream? Um. Well, the the true answer is because you're an INFJ and. I'm an ENTP, and I am an ENTP who is uh, more developed in the areas that matter to an INFJ than some other ENTPs, a lot of other ENTPs, and because um, there aren't a lot of other environments in your life that engage with you as an intuitive as you want to be engaged with, like that, for Thank example. You. That's how you want to be engaged with. Can I be in this shot with you? Yes. Of course. That's a stinky one. Uh-oh. That one smells like like after you go poop a mammoth. So I want to say, Matthew Alistair, it was a trip having... Um, my dad is alive. Uh, but having an ENFP dad was a trip. I always will think of him. He was... Exactly like Robin Williams in um, Mrs. Doubtfire, take away the turning into uh, an old nanny. Like in the beginning when he's like having the party for the kids and he's not thinking about anything else. He just wants the kids to be having fun. Like that's what my dad was all about. And uh, actually my mom was very much like the mom in the, the movie too who was like, I can't take this anymore. I'm done. That was uh, Sally Fields. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good Sally Fields invitation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she was just like, <gasps> I just don't know. Take it anymore. Oh. You're a child. I always have to be the young dumb player. And I'm done with it. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sally Fields. <laughs> um. It was fun. He was a really fun dad, you know. Um, I think it was tough for my mom a little bit because she had to be the adult a lot. Um, but he's a lot of fun. My dad is so fun. I learned about music through him, um, movies through him, TV through him. He, he's a man who's not afraid to feel life. Well, now it's like Mrs. Doubtfire, actually, because they are divorced. LOL. <laughs> Say Sally. Do Sally Field saying that? What? You like me. Really? You like me. You really like me. Who is it? Is she the one who said that? Yeah, she did say oh, that. Oh, she is the one who said She's that? Like, you like me. You really like me. She likes to, to do that a lot. Her hair. She's a lot of nice hair. She was a uh, gidget. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. Um. I do have an ENFP uh, dad, Levi Samuels. Yes. Well, let me tell you. That's one aquatic dad. He is... Swimming in moisture. He's seen it firsthand. <laughs> I mean, absolutely swimming in moisture. RTI is pretty perfect on a lot of subjects. Yeah, it's true. I don't know, really? TE tool slot. I'm just going to take care of everything that's useful. That's good. It's good, Aaron. The other thing is, whether, you, whether you're actively engaged with the, extroverted intu the raw extroverted intuition or not, 
it still is an absolute value for you, which means at, at the very least, um, <laughs> I'm a little drunk. That's funny. It means at the very least that whatever you're hearing from me has to not just be TI sound, but also novel to he, to you. Uh, in other words, if I were, if you didn't feel like you were hearing new things consistently over time, then you'd probably not care very much about the TI anymore. Like, uh, you're not watching an ISTP's channel for some reason. And it's because as an NIDOM, you do value expert intuition. It just probably plays out a little bit differently than you want to, you don't necessarily want to sop up just raw, random nonsense. I mean, that's bad expert intuition is bad, no matter who does it, no matter yeah. what slot it's in. Uh, Sometimes so. I'm like, like just, can we just get over it and like, let me, but I mailed him um, and he like loved it so much that I got emojis and you know, that's good. Um, what was I gonna say? Email anthrax? Not like that, Wait. okay? What would you do if your dad was, was... <sighs> Ah! No, see he- Too soon, email anthrax, too soon. See, We're see still mourning Robin Williams. With me? When my dad gets down on himself, I ask him questions. I'm like, because I'll let him be until a point. And then it's like, is everything okay? Because everyone else is afraid to ask him, but I'm not because sometimes you need to hear like the hard truth. And he does care about my feelings. Like he's dating now. And he was like, just so you know, like, I'm going to be dating and I hope that's okay with you. And I was like, yeah, of course, like get out there. He's like, I think I would be really good for someone. I'm like, you will be. I was like, absolutely. You will be like, you should have been like best. someone don't, don't tie yourself down. You go out there and you slay. So you should have told him. You think, what do you yeah, have? I said that in so many words. Okay. I said that in so many words. I was like, People are gonna love you on Tinder. I I was very positive. I don't know. You no, know, I, I actually I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I was joking, Rachel, because I actually think that it's a bad bad advice to tell him to go out and slay the puss. I think it's a good advice to tell him to find the next his next yeah, relationship I, I partner. He is a good, he's very relationship. Yeah, you can tell. he's very relationship. He likes good movies. He likes jokes. He says he likes to mix it up, so he'll probably take you to a lot of different places. So can my, get, can I get, why are you trying to trade for TE? The only card that's missing in your set is Essie, buddy. So I wanted to, to say NF, NFP with TJ. I believe ENFP and ESTJ are activity partners. And I can attest to the fact that when we were growing up, whenever we were going on vacations, it was very pleasant. Like, my mom organized everything. My dad, like you know, had the directions and he didn't keep mind driving. We all had, I had my, I was listening to my music. My sister was listening to her music. My brother was playing video games in the back seat. Like, so activity times were really fun. Um, they were very organized and they were really fun. So, um, but then, you know, once the kids grow up, it's like, they they did they do travel well together. They once the kids grew up, they went on vacations, so it wasn't even really that bad for them then either. But um, you know now they're they're separated. Um, just because I wish I hadn't typed this now. Now you just say the words, but I finished typing unnecessary. Okay, uh, uh much period. Matthew's actually pretty straight up TI forward. He just avoids TI stuff so he doesn't display much. I tested him one time. He's TI forward. But that's not, it's like, you know, yeah. it, it's, there's definitely a stigma associated with this shit. Probably because of me, in part, you know. TI polar is not a disorder any more than FI polar is. So, you know, it's like, I feel like almost saying, oh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to talk shit, but but Matthew's T.I. Polar. 
Oh, okay. Don't, don't say and I also it, want to... That, um, that's not the right attitude. I am <laughs> not dismissing Bill Burkett's experience at all. What did Bill Burkett say? It was tough for him as an INFP in a TJ household. I'm sure it was. Uh, whereas I had my dual and my benefactor as parents. Pretty convenient. <laughs> Could you could you pick two? Could you yeah? Could you end up with a? Could you pick it better mm -hmm. than than if you picked it my if I picked it myself? No. Could I pick better than my dual and my benefactor type? No. That's crazy. Put the heat on. It's great. Yeah. Um, oh, I know. I just wanted. To, I I was taking precautionary measures, saying I wasn't trying to dismiss you. You know, I, I neither was she saying that you were saying that you were, she was. But I, I believe <laughs> that uh, everyone's feelings are valid, you know, except Matthew's. His feelings are invalid. I'm sorry, Matthew. What is he feeling? Matthew, all there. It doesn't matter what you're feeling, it's always the wrong feeling. Sorry to tell you. Nice. Shit. <laughs> what are you feeling right now, Matthew? What, yeah, what are you feeling? Tell drunk. me your emotions. Besides drunk, are you drunk? Tell us your emotional feelings from your heart. Yeah, perspective is valid, valid too. Oh, Matthew, share with us the earnest, tender goodness of the emotions feel in your heart. I love ENFPs. I do too. I like Matthew a lot. I always like Matthew a lot. Matthew's um neurotic a little bit though. You never know what you're feeling until after you felt it. Eric, my dad is ISTP and my mom's ESFP. I've often told my SC is too strong for INTJ, but my thinking is my household. Certain things those functions I thought on how environments could shape type like that. Well, look, the fact that if you're an INTJ and you have fairly good SE, that's, um, well, the question would be, what do you mean by I have fairly good SE? Because if you mean that you tend to get your shit done, that's not surprising. That's consistent with INTJs generally. Yeah. INTJs have no have less problem getting shit done than INTJs. I used to my like any INTJ always thought that I was like pretty useless. Well, yeah. no, they just thought that I should always have a job, like like be working and not being not smoke weed. Like, thanks, that's not helpful. Okay, so Aaron, the thing is, it's like because your tool function is TE, and you're paying attention to how to accomplish goals, basically. It's unavoidable that your SE gets uh, gets brought into the mix more often um, on the terms of the executing tasks things aspect of things than does INFJs because INFJs FE they're going to be more likely to do things which means engage with other people so whereas Engagement for you is the alternative to solvency. In other words, probably when you're interacting with, but even then you say, you have a reason to be here. You're getting TI from me in some regard. Uh, that's very instrumental frame. So presumably you think you're learning things now that are going to be useful to you. And so in that sense, you're both using your tool function to frame this and your dominant function because you're looking for the correct answer. But, um, but because you tend to use your tool function TE on specific problems, as it's normally used on, then once you, if you're spending all your time figuring out how to how to solve this problem, eventually you do solve the problem. Uh, FE types, if they're they're thinking all the time about about the challenges of of community, basically, and um, that's less consistent with task completion form of SE. In INFJ. And an INTJ both will probably be more gratified in the in the short term by the physical part of SE, like going out and and running, jogging, or riding your bike, yeah. or stuff like that. Okay, in the gym. 
but I sus- but I would suspect that it's more balanced for INTJ than INFJ. In other words, INTJ probably feels yeah. um, some more satisfaction in the in the metaphysical aspect of SE, which is the getting shit done, yeah. uh, and um, less in the physical aspect of SE, which is the exercising, playing sports kind of stuff. Matthew, Alistair, I never know what I'm feeling. Do you? Do your emotions change often? Let me see what else we have here. Lots of stuff going on. Let me read some things. I'm gonna read a bunch of stuff out loud so I cover a bunch of stuff. All right. Um. I'm transubstantiating this bong rip to all the people in this. Add fancy deluxe. Yeah, TA polar only sounds dumb to a small yeah. portion of the population, whereas SE polar is useless to pretty much everyone. Um, my parents are INFJ and ISTJ. They have an interesting relationship. Well, I bet they do. That's weird. That's a strange one. The best part is with TI polar, I don't even care whether I'm dumb or not. You're not dumb. You're just not um, consistency driven. I never know what I'm feeling. My dad, Eric, my dad is ISTP and my mom's ESFP. I read that already. Um, Matthew, mm-hmm. share with us your deepest, darkest secret. Can ISTP not do almost any SE stuff? Uh, ISTPs are very good at SE in both the getting shit done department of it and in the acting in the moment department of it. Um, yeah, that's good. They they also tend to possibly have drug and alcohol problems, though, and uh, how much that impacts them. It's like ISTPs are the kind who can get rip and drunk, sleep four hours, get up, and go to work the whole next day. At least while they're young, and uh, and not complain about it too much. So, um, if I say my opinion to my dad, he's cursing at me in Spanish. But who cares? I've said it's that it's important to me. But whatever makes you happy. I don't know what that's about. I never am positive, honestly, what I'm feeling. I love Matthew. Mm-hmm. Having an ESFP dad would be so much fun. I don't think so. My mom is an ENFJ. So my you I use my use of SI is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> yeah, well, to the extent that you get trained in using your weaker functions at home. I mean, that's the thing, is I grew up in a family with the dominant SI, second slot SI, but my SI was not good. And it I don't think I don't think it was any better than it would have been or worse than it would have been if I'd been raised by other people. I don't think I really internalized it. My SI has gotten better as I've gotten older. And that's the thing is you improve in your third and your fourth functions or you evolve or devolve in your third and fourth functions as you get older. So it's, if you're really not on a good path, it could be, you you know, you, you just get ever more, <coughs> ever more stubbornly married to what doesn't work. But, um, <laughs> Assuming you you can get past that notion, then probably your s your fourth and third slots are going to uh, be more learn to balance, learn to use them more, learn to get more bang from your buck for your buck from them. So I may not spend more time attending to introverted sensing much, but I I there's a couple pivotal things where you know I don't make big mistakes that I might have made some other time of. Of like not eating before going on a big adventure, or uh, you know, I, I'm generally better about that than I used to be, and I keep in mind how I'm going to feel physically later. Whereas when I was younger, I, I didn't really keep that in mind much. With the FE, this environment has afforded me the ability to shape my FE. I needed to be in the right place for my FE to really get shaped, though. So it's not necessarily the case that an ENTP's FE is going to improve as they get older. But if they are positioned in an environment that basically rewards, is, is mistake tolerant, rewards good FE, and gives honest, and, you know, and it allows one to incur the natural consequences of the bad in FE, then my FE will improve because I will learn. 
and I do value it enough that I don't want to have bad FE. So, you know, that's my experience with, with function growth. And the thing is, <laughs> I don't think that, that you can really improve your other functions. I think you can have better or worse relationships with them in some sense. Like, uh, I've learned to accept emotions sometimes require you to just sit with them and let them let let yourself feel them and under, to understand them. sometimes being feeling emotions it takes it's a slow process for me anyway and i have to i've spent time just feeling it or whatever but that's sort of an intellectual improvement in how i relate to the experience rather than an actual uh Increased manner of attention or something like that. We Thanks, can Elle. we can better understand intellectually the back, how we interact with our backslot functions, but we can't ever understand that better experientially. Not really. Hmm. So yeah, it's just some computer program. It's not intelligence. Well, it's a. Uh, we both have the same value because we both have a deliberation function second, Matthew, and that is to say we both value the idea that we are equipped to draw the correct conclusion ourselves. Is your head cold? No. Oh. I'm just stemming and scratching my head a little bit. Oh, I do that, as you've seen. Um, if you have a deliberation function second, like I do, I know, Matthew, but listen to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you and I both have the same approach towards drawing conclusions, as you see right here. I, I don't need to rely on an expert. I can trust my own deliberation to tell me the right answer. And the difference is, you trust your own deliberation to tell you an answer that is consistent with your honest interests. And that's good. And I trust my deliberation to tell me an answer that's consistent with universal defensibility. And that's good. So it's not just, it's not just, uh, it's true you can certainly program something to do conditional reasoning. The thing that makes TI more than just that is it's linked to is that it's always applied. So um, it's not just the ability to say this contradicts that. It's the ability to say, uh, but you said this, which infers this. Previously, previously, you said that, which infers this. And those things that both things infer are contradictory. Or both of these things rely upon assumptions they contradict each other are mutually exclusive or if you do, you know it's, it's lots of mechanic ti mechanics that involve any and the various objects on the flow it's more complicated than just than just processing conditionals i mean sure you question yourself matthew you question yourself sure what i'm saying i'm not trying to dismiss your intellect or something what I'm saying is that, I, I mean, I'm just saying that we both are deliberative types, which means by default, what we're going to use our tool function to do is to come to conclusions, okay? The thing is, it's much easier to come to conclusions about low resolution stuff, like I do. Since I'm dealing with low resolution life, that is to say, language, symbols, um, and the way in which they in a binary fashion interact, it's much easier to, to come to correct conclusions because the, uh, the data is much less nuanced. If I'm using FI as a tool function, it coming to a conclusion is much more challenging because the data is much more nuanced. There's some conclusions that are easy enough to come to, like you may know the, the real, the, you may know that you don't want to, uh, stab that cat okay that's a pretty clear fi thing because i and i'm not saying that you're not saying 
that I'm not saying that you're trying to not dismiss me. You're just not saying what you're practically speaking is what you're not saying is that you're missing. Um, what, are you, what are you missing? I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's such a strange question because the answer is There's not, it's not like, it's not like we can imagine Matthew, but, but with T-I instead of F-I. It, it wouldn't be Matthew then. Matthew is Matthew because of the order of, fun, because of who he is and all the components of him. So it's like, are you missing anything? You're missing not being you? It's a weird question, you know? The thing is, the, the good news for everybody is our polar, we actually are somewhat protected in that we, it seems to be extremely difficult for us to gr grasp what it is we're missing, you know? Like, I, it's, and, and I think that's to protect us. I think if I really had full understanding of what it means to have FI polar, I... I'd sob at, at the horrible tragedy of the whole thing. I think everybody would <laughs> feel that way about their poll if they really understood what it was they were missing. But it, because it's like every single one of us was born blind in one of our senses, you know? But, but, but the thing is, with our physical senses, you know, eyes, ears, nose, smells, whatever, we know that some people are blind, most people have all their senses. But, um, but intentionally, observationally, we have to be incapable of one of those channels, essentially incapable of, of using it in any meaningful way because of the sort of inherent mechanics of prioritization and exclusivity and limited amount of hours to attend it via. Time is the ultimate constraint on observation. Give me a real answer. I'm saying, what is TI stuff in real life? What questions that are important do I not know the answer to? Are you polar? Um, and I'm saying that's not that's not the right question, Matthew. I, that is a real answer. The real answer is that's not the right question. Um, it's not it's not just a a mechanism by which we derive conclusions. It's definitive of who we are fundamentally so to say that you know ti ti makes me who i am which makes me want to explain this in a way that's correct and less metaphorical and so as a consequence i'm i'm approaching it like this approaching it like this is not preferable to however it is you approach it um, so the answer is, it, first of all, TI does not provide information. It's a way of drawing conclusions. You know, it's a, it's a metric. So let's say you were hired as an uh, employee at a, at a clothing store, and you were told to fold all the blue shirts and to put all the green shirts in the bin. You'd be using a metric. The metric would be blue gets folded, and green goes in the bed. Um, so if you were to say, well, let's say you didn't you didn't get assigned the job of green goes into the bin. You say, well, what am I missing? Well, you're you're not instead of putting the green ones in the bin, you're folding the blue ones. What do you mean? What are you missing? It's not it's not information. It's a it's a process. So the thing you're missing is the process. I know you're not opposed to correctness. I'm just saying that, uh, no, you, you, I don't think you do disagree with correctness. I think you're, you're, not, you're, you're not understanding that it's a process. It's a process. Look, correctness is distinct from in my interests. It, it's not, it doesn't mean that being in your interest doesn't mean it's incorrect. Like, so if, um, if, uh, if somebody gives me a dollar too little change, it's incorrect. But if I don't notice it and I walk outside and I'm at my car and I realize it gave me a dollar too much interest, uh, too much change, it's also in my interest. So 
Um, I I probably won't go back if I don't know to tell get the car to give them the dollar back, right? I just keep the dollar. Now, if it's it, if on the other hand I notice it at the cash register, they gave me a dollar too much, I will give them the dollar back because it's incorrect. But it's not in my interest to give them the dollar back. And if I prioritize my interest in that moment, I would take the extra dollar because after all, they gave it to me and it's not my responsibility to give me a correct change and go outside. So I'm not even making any claim about what one ought to do in that circumstance. I think that's a positive moral indication, not a negative one. So there's no universal answer to that. I don't, ha- I don't feel like I'm obligated to give them that dollar back. I typically do because I, for magical thinking reasons, have, feel I have a positive moral indication to um, make it correct. Okay? Of course you do. Of course you do. Because the thing is, though, Matthew, the example I gave you there was very uh, proto-TI because I want it to be clear. All right? I want it to be clear. But... Um, the way it actually plays out is not like the change example where I have a choice to work what's correct or what's in my own interest. But um, in terms of discourse, it's something like this. It's like, well, the ENFP will prioritize Here's what I see as inequity or injustice in the world. And uh, and the TI person would say, well, how do we know it's unjust? And the, T- and the FI person would say, because we can see suffering or inequality or something. And the TI person would say, well, um, how did that how did that suffering come about? Who's responsible for it and, uh, and why? And the FI person would say, it doesn't really matter. We have to do something to resolve the problem because it exists and it's bad and we should do something about it. And the TI person would say, well, it's not possible for us to do something correct unless we understand how and why this a purported suffering came to be and who's responsible for it because they're the ones who should be attending to it. And the FI person says, it doesn't matter if they're the ones who are responsible for it because we're the ones who are capable of remedying the harm. And so we ought to do it. And the TI person says, but there are infinite possible existent harms that we could remedy that aren't our problem. Why pick this one? And the FI person says, because this is so important. And the TI person goes, you are a cancer on public policy, aren't you? An absolute cancer. And the FI person goes, nah. And the TI person goes, but did you hear what I said right there in that whole exchange, Matthew? What did I not do? I didn't have the ENFP say anything false. The ENFP is not embracing what's false. They're embracing what's true, but not logically important. Because it's important to you and your emotions and feelings and stuff. It's not logically important, though. I, I could say... But she feels so strongly about this. That's not a justification for anything in TI, right? Because it doesn't universalize. Yeah, but I might feel so strongly the opposite. And that doesn't justify me getting my way. Why would it justify her getting her way? It's, the underlying TI is the notion of reciprocal burdens, whereas underlying FI is the notion of harm reduction, suffering, um, or, or ecstasy, you know, like genuine experiential goods and and bads that link to either the words or people or objects or things of the world, you know? That's, what's the cognitive function behind cancel culture? What's cancel culture? Could I manifest a TE polar manifest? Can I explain how TE polar manifests if you had it? Well, 
you might um, do something like Rachel did earlier when she tried to show you her coffee and poured it all over her lap. <laughs> and then apologize. And then apologize. You're all over that tool. <laughs> um, why is everyone placing cognitive functions on societal frameworks? What's the importance of logical importance? Well, the thing is, the importance of logical importance is that it it cares about reciprocal burdens. So even though this might seem unkind, we have to treat this person the same with it. We have to apply the same standards to both parties in a dispute and as much as possible universally. Pauline Napoleon says, I would say the TI seeks for universal rules which have no exceptions. That means they are true. I would say that uh, TI... Uh, TI has a universal rule, which is validity, and it applies that rule to things to see if they validate. If they do validate, then it talks about, at that point, we turn to truth, which is a second level, be, is a level below validity. Um, now, how does TI determine what is logical? How does it distinguish what is moral? There has to be a framework and method to it. There must be subject to things known. Okay, so the thing is, TI is a framework, and that framework is defensibility. The, the, the thing underlying FI is <coughs> authentic experience, <coughs> is the authentic experience of value as, a, as an agent. The thing underlying TI is is the it's the authentic experience of morality and communication basically if you if you want to say fi links to morality and experience then ti links to morality and communication um TI assumes that it assumes reciprocal burdens. But you said is the TI SI thing. But you said meow, and now you said meow. The TI is the thing that prevents, it interferes with autocracy. TI assumes everybody's equal. FI assumes everybody matters. Um, it's, hard to, it's hard to use these kind of metaphors to talk about functions because we got to remember that they're fundamentally processes of attention. So in other words, right now, what I'm doing is using TI to answer these questions and try to figure out what the right words are to say that makes sense with everything else. But it's a complicated question, I guess. Cancel culture rarely actually succeeds in its goal to cancel people. What is cancel culture? Isn't it funny that the person's name is the boss when we call it when we're talking about how your dad uses the word boss? Yeah. Well, you know, this person actually is Bruce Springsteen. That's why he's called the boss. Cool. That's you, you, right, you know Bruce? So, how do you know so much about co cancel culture? I would think if cancel culture was a real thing, that like the boss would probably have to cancel his concerts, right? Because like that's canceling. Like, well, I was asking what cancel culture is. That's what people are. Interested. I know, I know. I don't know what is cancel culture. Cancel culture wouldn't it, matter except for the fact that it is the gateway to fascism. That's why it matters. What? What do you mean? What is it though? Nobody answers I mean, my question. Said it was, when people protest somebody's opinion and prevent them from having a career, how do they do that? I mean, I don't understand how, how that would happen. That means. I don't understand that either. Only strong survive now with police and courts. We have to restrain our actions because of jail, right? Um, the only discuss it being performed on social media in the form of group shaming. Oh, okay. Group shaming refers to the popular practice of withdrawing support for public figures and companies after they've done or said something considered objectionable or offensive. Okay, cool. Now I understand what it is. Yeah. How, are this, yeah. Okay, so how does TI determine what's logical? It it uses reciprocal burdens. It says we can we can assign a value of truth temporarily for the sake of argument, but if you assign a value of truth to that, then I can also assign a value of truth to something equivalent. If you're going to use this 
argumentation thing. I can use that argumentation thing. TI is built on the fundamental quality, quantity, uh, unit of measure of called rhetorical slope. Just as things matter more to you or less to you with your FI, like, for example, I love uh, Delilah more than I love um, Countess. <laughs> um, I love Delilah more than I love Countess. So uh, it would matter more to me. I'd be much more torn up if something were to happen to Delilah than to Countess. Not that I would not be have appropriate appropriate remorse or appropriate uh, grief if something would happen to Countess. Yeah. But I'm just saying... Obviously, I would care. I'd care a lot more if something happened to my daughter than if something happened to, to somebody I don't know very well. Me um, too. So, to, uh, let me let me just finish this thought real quick, and I'll hand it over to you. Um, so, just as so that's that's what you call sort of attachment slope. Rhetorical slope is the equivalent for TI. It says, um, are, how, how well are we successfully excluding um, stuff that just applies to you? So, in other words, I like that more. Because, like, the fact that uh, I'd be more torn with Delilah, that's specific to me because of my relationship with Delilah, right? And um, rhetorical slope is the same sort of thing for TI. It's like, okay, well, it's difficult to make this argument because it's untrue. And you say, well, how do you know it's untrue? Well, that's complicated. It, same thing as, it's really difficult for me to handle this loss. Well, why is that so important to you? Well, it's, it's because it, it was important to me. Well, why? Well, it's, that's difficult to explain. Okay, Matthew, so what type do you think you are then? I don't know. It's like you want to keep telling me that I don't understand feelings or whatever. I'm giving you a perfectly cogent explanation and drawing the correlates and saying, um, I'm saying that FI has the metric of attachment. TI has the metric of rhetorical slope, which is a complicated thing to explain. Okay? What exactly is attachment and what exactly is rhetorical slope? Rhetorical slope I can explain more easily, but it's still complicated. Uh, attachment, I can't. Hey, Matthew, I don't claim to be an expert on FI, but I am trying to answer your questions. You're asking questions and, and pro, pro prompting me to attempt to answer them. And what I just said is as clearly defensible as any statement ever, anyone's ever made about TI and FI, which is FI is about attachment and TI is about defensibility. Okay, then teach me something, Matthew. Teach me about the moisture of your tenders. Yeah. Um, Angus here, it's funny that you mentioned Beetlejuice because that was a script that I used uh, when I was in acting class. Because I knew it was really fun to play, and I wanted to play a female Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice was like a favorite movie of mine as a kid. <clears throat> Mr. Tully man telling me banana. I brought some. Comes and me wanna go I brought some songbooks <gasps> down from. Oh the, my gosh, is Beetlejuice in there? I don't know. I don't think I have Beetlejuice. Oh, okay. But, uh, I brought some fake books down from the upper part of the garage, and I was thinking if uh, Rick's on my play and sing a couple of covers, if she sees something in one of those books that she'd like to uh, live music karaoke with me, and then. We're going to play a couple of karaoke songs. Yay. Yeah. 
If you named your kid Oki, you could you end up saying like, hey, "Can you carry Oki to bed?" To bed? I don't know that song. Oh, not carry Oki to bed. Carry Oki to bed. Don't cry for me, Argentina. <laughs> That's probably difficult to play. But I'm not. I was just. It just makes me think of Madonna. Oh, Madonna. Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. When will you learn that you're terrible? I really don't like Madonna at all. A lot of things about Madonna make me go, ew! I, ew! Madonna! Ugh. Your fake British accent makes me say so. Makes me super, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, if I, uh, Um, I'll probably pick up the accent. That's how I am, though. Fe tool. Okay, good. There's Christmas songs. Cool. I want to. Can we listen to? Can we try on Wisconsin? Just because my my cousin's going to Wisconsin. Can you hum a few bars? I don't even know. I don't know, I don't know what it, it is. It, it ha you have to pick a song that I know the melody to. I don't know the melody. I won't be able to play it. Hi, big band. I mean, if, you know, you got to, there aren't a lot of songs that you're going to particularly be smitten by in there. You got to kind of dig through it a bit and look for Lady things. Madonna. Hmm. There you go. Beatles. 414. Lady Madonna. Children at your feet. Wondering how you managed to make ends meet. Who finds the money when you pay the rent? Did you think that money was heaven sent? If you're counting on evolution to solve a problem, Raphael, you got a long wait. Can I? I'm going to use a marker. Because you marked some. Like, you yeah, like. sure. Do whatever you want. Is that On the Road again? No, that's King of the Road. That's a good song. That is a good song, but I don't know that either. I, you'll hear it if we play King of the Road. You want to do Lady Madonna first? Okay. Um, let's bring this table over here and put it down there on the table. And then just give me a second to sort of play it yeah. through and figure it out before sure. we start. I wanted to get a. Um, oh, yeah, okay, sure. We don't have to marker. A marking pen, or you mean like, like a, a, a sticky note? No, no, like a uh... marking pen. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, like an educational one that they a highlighter. Highlighter, yeah. Oh. Highlighter. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool, there's no reason for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight. I'm a rookie. For your love. From me to you. I think that's a. I think I know that one too. Penny Lane. Please, Mr. Postman. I don't know that song, baby boy. I have to know the song. And I saw her Cry. I don't like to cry. 
cry when we stand in front of others, especially I do not know them. Something's coming into it being a song at some point here. That little number there. I'll play an actual song now, though. Don't be a crybaby. Some people say, don't be a crybaby. That's what some people say. El Nino, my ass. Call the storms. Where is the rain? Those drizzles don't count. I drizzle more when I pee in the sink. Just the right height to catch all of the undesired splatter. And when I'm done, I'll go outside and climb the ladder. I will go up there and take me a bucket and pour water inside. And I'll say, hey, Mr. Cloud, drop it from the bottom. Hey, Mr. Cloud, drop it from the bottom. Hey, Mr. Cloud, drop it from the bottom on me. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. I actually can't play Whisper Shout. I have no idea how to play that song. <laughs> An experiment which proves that openly expressing aggression makes you more aggressive compared to writing an essay about the topic. So crying is the same thing. But crying is not the same thing, though, Raphael. Even if even if it's true that openly expressing aggression uh, sort of it has a increased the likelihood of more aggression in the future, crying makes you feel better, or sleepy, anyway. When you have a good cry, and you cry all a lot, then what you get is you get this... Um, you get this, uh, yeah, I can do that. You get this, like, just after it rained feeling of all clean and clear inside of you. With all your emotions washed away. Crying is like going number four. Going number one is peeing. Number two, pooing. Number three, ejaculating. And number four is crying. And, you know, crying matters. Crying lives matter. I'll keep on looking. This is great. This is so cool, baby. Crying lives matter. I'm sorry that I was like, I didn't mean to be a snob. You weren't, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Captain Apologies. <laughs> what, what was it called again? It's called, oh yeah, with that. Okay, so we'll do Lady Madonna. Sure, you want to do Lady Madonna right now? Yeah, sure. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, let me just get the page. Sure. 4, 14, 20. ASMR literature whispers. The penal quality by Franz Kafka. <laughs> what is this? I have to see what this is. Oh, my is. God. Please do. Hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of Literature ASMR. 
Today's famous literary work is Franz Kafka's The Penal Colony, and as always, I'll be providing it to you as an ASMR experience. Franz Kafka's The Penal Colony, <laughs> Chapter One. It was nothing but schlongs all day long before <laughs> I looked. I'd wake up in the morning in the field of vision when I opened my eyes was filled with penises from one horizon to the next. <laughs> Dear Lord, I cried out, what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> it had turned out I had committed a crime and the Byzantine nature of government had cared little for justice, instead caring only that I be forced to endure as many schlongs per minute, per day, per hour, per week as possible. Thus did I find myself tossed asunder, living in the hell of a penis-filled landscape. That's the penal colony by Franz Kafka. Wait, that's not the penal. Eric, you didn't really read Franz Kafka's The Penal Colony. You're just making a joke about the title sounding like penis. Yeah, I didn't know that was real. There's a real book called The Penal yeah, yeah. Colony? Yeah, there is. So here we go, uh, Lady Madonna. Has so many verses. Um, this how does this song go? I plan straight across the and yeah. I'll meet you at the station. That's how I pay back right now. Because I made it my reservation. Don't be slow. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no,
Those are all the Beatles ones. Okay. How about uh I play when I'm sixty four. Okay. I love that song. Eight oh one. Oh, we seem to be missing some book here. I must have left it up in the top. I just I don't have that one. I only have to do six six hundred and something in this book uh, right now. Must be, must, the rest of it must probably be up, up on the top of the uh, garage. Oh, cool. The big book. Yeah, it is. Um. How about Penny Lane? I know Penny Lane. Penny Lane. Oh, you know this song? What? Do you remember when we met? That's the day I knew you were my pet. I want to tell you. Just how much I love you. Come, come with me, my love, in the sea, the sea of love. I want to tell you just how much I love you. I know that song is because um, Robert Plant covered that song. It's it a solo solo effort. That's where I'm familiar with. It. We're looking for Penny Lane. Penny Lane. Oh, the power of love. Penny Lane is five fifty eight. Fifty eight. Is it really? Yes, I want to get physical. physical. That's cool. Oh, my God, that is cool. Mm -hmm. Here I don't, I'm not sure the the B flat E flat part. I'm not sure. It didn't seem to. Penny Lane is in my ears and in my eyes. Yes, there it goes. Okay. 
Where beneath the blue suburban skies I sit and meanwhile that Hi, Dad. What's going on? Where'd you get a Facebook? I've had this for years, yeah. I think you should say I had this at East End Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to get a fake book. Uh, you know, all the chords and everything, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. We're just playing okay. Okay. But anyway, we're doing a run around with the, trying to get an appointment for Jane. So I got an appointment, phone appointment for me on Monday and for Jane on Thursday. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get some x lax and I'm going to take it, uh, x lax and milk or magnesia for that matter, and take it down to Joanna just in case they approve it. So I'm going to ask Waldron on Monday if he would go ahead and call. He probably won't because he's not their regular doctor. But, uh, I, you know, it's just this COVID, boy, you really need to clean out that water. Well, what happened? Anyway, that's... On the other, it's, 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 I got the thing that happens. We got some algae discs to try to feed the bottom feeder, and the, al- the algae discs, uh, you're, they make the water green. So and it eats the oxygen. Well, I mean, that's okay, let's move on. It's, it's, that's I'm not sure it's even living algae. I just, I was just all of a sudden amazed that. Whoa! There's yeah. plenty of oxygen in there because it gets a lot of oxygenation from the waterfall. All right. So anyway, we're going to try and work that through. Um, so I'll be gone for just a little bit, delivering yeah, vital medical supplies. Uh, okay. Well, why don't you Why don't you deliver them some prunes too? Get a box of prunes and give it to yeah. them. Oh no, she she already is doing that. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're already choosing prunes. Oh, I man. just had suggested that at one point we use milk from magnesia, and I said the results were spectacular. Mm. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, why well, is it spectacular <laughs> is one word for it, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, all right. I'll be gone about an hour. All right, see you later. Okay. What is closed or open? Uh, open's fine at the moment. Thanks. So, yeah, this one works, but it's like this transition in here. Sorry, I messed that up. No, no, it's not. It's it's difficult because it it, it goes it goes a. And so then there beneath the blue suburban skies mm-hmm. is different than what I never knew that. Uh, there. Yeah, uh, you know, it's like coming into Penny here. It's a weird transition. So it turns the vocal melody. You know. Penny Lane, the barber shaves another customer. Right, let's take it from the let's take it from the top and see if we can do it here. Okay. okay. Penny Lane is a bummer. Let's get let's get the right note to start on. I got Penny. it. Hold on, wait. Penny Lane, Penny Lane, Penny Lane there is a bummer. Every hand is at the, the pleasure to know and all the people that come and go. Stop and say hello. On the corner, there's a banker with a motor car. The little children of the hip behind his back. And the banker never wears a mac. In the pouring rain, very strange. And he lays in my ear. Very strange. Let me just figure this out, okay? Sure. In the pouring rain, very strange. Penny Lane is in my ears and in my eyes. That beneath the blue suburban skies, I sit and meanwhile back in the rain. It, it's, it's weird. It's, it goes it's has really to go back. Strange. What a strange oh, thing to do. It is. Look, the melody, I'm talking about just the melody here. This Penny Lane coming out of into this B flat, it, it like changes keys or something. Yeah, so it it's hard to, hard to find it, you know? Mm-hmm. Very, 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 very strange. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, I'm going to go over here. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
it goes back here. I know, but I need to figure out how it transitions from oh, here to okay. here. Because we can't, we're not getting the right vocal melody when we transition here. The chords are right, but the vocal melody is something really strange. So it's like, um, That's how it goes, but it's, it's a hard song to say. There's a shelter in the middle of a roundabout. Pretty nurse is sitting, selling poppies from a tray. And though she feels as if okay, she's so in Rachel, a Okay, so Rachel, listen. Play, I tell you what we'll do with these things, okay? Let's, um, let's, at some point, maybe let's end the stream pretty soon. Let's practice some of these songs, yeah. and then we'll, we'll do one where we... We've got um, we we have a, a list and we'll play some of these songs, okay? Sure. But um, it it requires too much figuring out on my part right now, and it's pretty pretty boring to watch somebody figure stuff out like that. So uh, um, thanks for listening, Mike. Yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> uh, do you do? Let's see. We want. End this now. Do we... That's up to you. I don't really necessarily need to. I want to look through the other book too. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's a Cecilia in it. Oh. That's mm -hmm. a fun one. You know that song? Yeah, I like Cecilia. Okay. What does that all of me, too? All of me. What's that? Why not take all of me? Can't you see that they're going around you? I have a gap in that. Oh, that's not the page. 16, 16 is the page. Follow me, why don't you go to me? Can't you see that I'm no one without you? Well, this is not, this is not it's Cecilia. Not. Yeah. Boo. Enough of that. Okay, um, yeah. I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for being here, everybody. And don't forget to eat plenty of, of cheese. cheese.